I heard an old story. Thank you for tuning in to the television ministry of Clay's Mill Baptist Church. Join us as we share our passion for soul winning, spiritual growth, and revival in our state and nation. And now, Pastor Jeff Fugit. Well, good evening and welcome to the program tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate those that are watching right here in our state by way of television on WLJC Television and the many folks across the country and even around the world that watch our program on Facebook each Saturday evening. I was preaching over in Beckley, West Virginia uh, this past Monday and Tuesday. Very good church there, the Lighthouse Baptist Church. And I met folks there that watch the television program on Facebook. And I appreciate that. And I thank you folks uh, for the work you're doing there at the church at, in Daniels, West Virginia, just right beside Beckley. A wonderful group of people, a good pastor, Pastor Cochran, and the home of the uh, Joseph Academy, a school for boys, and uh, just a, a tremendous ministry. And so I welcome those that are watching uh, tonight. I appreciate the many notes and comments I've received. In fact, I have probably had a record number of prayer requests of folks that I am praying for and that I have prayed for this week. Uh, we have many folks across our state and across the nation that are dealing with uh, the flu, with virus, with COVID, all these uh, different things, and uh, been praying for many, many folks, and I thank you for the opportunity allowing me to pray for you. I prayed for folks from California to uh, Maine, uh, Philippines to India, and uh, it's a blessing uh, to know that our program is being a help and being a blessing to you. I would like to invite you to the church services tomorrow morning. Sunday school begins at 9.30, church at 10.30, and then tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. If you do not have a church that you attend on a regular basis, come and visit us tomorrow, and uh, we will enjoy having you with us. Midweek Bible study and prayer meeting is on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., and I want to invite you to come and be a part of uh, that service as well. If you live in Chesapeake, Virginia, I'll be at the Grace Baptist Church for their annual Labor Day revival. Uh, Pastor Netta Syme is a dear friend of mine, and I look forward uh, to being there in the church, a growing church, a church planting church. And uh, that's Monday and Tuesday evening, September 6 and 7. Then I'll be at the Victory Baptist Church in Winthrop, Maine on September 13 and 14. I look forward to being there with Pastor Drulard and the good folks there at the church that I've known for a good number of years. Our National Church Growth Conference and Church Revival is September 20 to 23. If you live in this region, uh, and uh, you, whether you're a pastor, a layman, uh, if you just want to come and enjoy uh, good singing, and old-time preaching, you will enjoy the services each evening at 7 p.m. Pastors and staff, folks are coming from across the nation to attend the conference to learn from the sessions. Uh, we'll be teaching uh, sessions on soul winning, uh, caring for nursery, building a bus ministry, uh, Sunday school, and all the other aspects of the ministry. Whether you are a church planter, and we'll be teaching on church planting, just getting started or working to plant a church or whether you're a church of 500 or a thousand i believe there are things that you can learn and i believe that there are things that will help you at the national church growth conference i invite you to attend september 20 to 23. september 27 and 28 I will be in Avenel, uh, New Jersey, with my good friend, Brother Jim Gelhausen, and uh, look forward to being in the church there again, and uh, the many pastors in that region. Uh, one of our graduates, uh, Pastor David Bobbitt, I look forward to seeing uh, him and his family, and folks from his church, if you live in that region, come and be with us. 
On October 4th and 5th, I will be at the Lighthouse Baptist Church in Reno, Nevada. Brother Ralston has been the pastor there a good number of years, and I look forward to being a part of this great conference. October 11 and 12, I'll be at the Liberty Baptist Church in Tacoma, Washington. This is a church that is in need of a pastor, and uh, these folks are my friends. I love and appreciate the faithful work of the layman there, and a good friend of mine served in that church for a good number of years. Uh, he is now working in a different church, and this church is in need of a pastor. I look forward to preaching uh, for them, and if you live in the region, let folks know that's October 11 and 12. October 18 and 19, I will be in Cadillac, Michigan with Brother Chris Dallas at the Faith Baptist Church. This is a great church, and I look forward to being back in North Michigan. October 25th and 26th, I'll be at the Grace Baptist Church in Kearneysville, West Virginia. This is a church about an hour uh, from Washington, D.C., and I appreciate uh, Pastor Craig Bush and the soul winning work that he's doing there and the graduates that are there from Commonwealth Baptist, uh, Commonwealth Baptist College. And so if you live in that region, we'd love to have you come and be a part of that. I'll stop there and then give you other meetings in the coming week. If you have time to call a friend or text someone and let them know Brother Fugit's on television. Uh, he and his family are on, and uh, you ought to encourage others to watch. Here's my family to sing. You'll enjoy this good song, and then I'll bring you the message this evening. The drunk on the street, the rich in their palaces, the poor and unlearned, and the man of degree, they all have a soul in need of salvation, and they all have to come by Calvary. So glad God saves old sinners. I'm thrilled and amazed that He sets them free. But the biggest surprise in saving old sinners is that He would save no sinner like me. Was I so bad that I needed forgiveness? Was I so wrong I had to be redeemed? I wasn't a thief, but I lived in sin's prison, and I was as lost as a sinner could be. I am so glad God saves old sinners. I'm thrilled and amazed that He sets them free. But the biggest surprise in redeeming old sinners is that He would save an old sinner like me that he would save an old sinner like me. I'm preaching tonight from the book of Judges in chapter 6. In this chapter, there is one of the most exciting stories that we find in all of the Bible. If we listed 50 of the exciting stories of the Bible, the story of Gideon would certainly be one that we would list. Gideon was the least of the least of tribes of the tribes of Israel, and God used him in a marvelous way. But I want to preach tonight on what brought about the situation up to the time of Gideon becoming a leader and defeating the Midianites. When you come to Judges chapter 6, there has been seven years of depression in the land of Israel. Seven years of depression. 
a careful reading of the verses that I'm going to give you this evening. In Judges chapter 6, tell us why there is seven years of depression. Now, I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm about to say, but most of, much of the frustration and depression that we face in our nation today is the result of the same type behavior that we're going to read about in Judges chapter 6. Now, I understand that mental illness is a reality. And I understand that sometimes depression is a result of mental illness, but much of the frustration, much of the anger, much of the rioting, much of the hatred that we have in our nation today, and yes, depression is a result of us not walking with God as he created us to do. I'm going to read from Judges chapter 6 as I preach the message tonight, what brought about the seven years of depression. Here's what the Bible says, Judges chapter 6. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. Now, it gives in a capsule what happens and what he tells us about in the chapter. What is frightening is that you have people like the Midianites. They are haters of freedom. They are haters of God. They are haters of life. And they are ready to devour at a moment's notice any sign of life and hope and freedom. Those type of people are in our world today. It is obvious as you read through American history and even world history, including the nation of Israel, we find that when God's people were disobedient in the sight of the Lord, that he would allow one of these people groups to bring destruction on the people that were supposed to be living a God-fearing and God-honoring life. Such is the case here, as Israel does evil in the sight of the Lord, and as a result, God allows the Midianites to take control of the people of Israel. Let me read the verses that explains what happened. And the hand of Midian, the Bible says, prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds, basically. They went into hiding. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth. Till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for the land, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord." Oftentimes, in preaching from this passage of Scripture, we begin with that verse I just ended with where the children of Israel cry out to the Lord, and as a result of their cry, God hears that, and he calls on Gideon to deliver them from the hand of the Midianites. But this evening, I want to back up, and I want to see what brought about this seven years of depression in the land of Israel. You see, the background of the story is a dark one. Seven times over, we read of the Lord delivering them into the hands of their enemies. For seven years, we read, Israel suffered under the hand of the Midianites. 
the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel because God had delivered them into the hands of the enemy. I preach this tonight to say, Satan is a devourer. And he has many minions that are ready to take away life, to take away liberty, to take away the happiness and the joy God wants us to have. They stand ready to bring destruction, but they cannot get to the child of God when God's hand of protection is about us, whether that be an individual, whether that be a family, whether that be a church, or even a nation. And when those people are evil in the sight of God and they walk away from right and truth in rebellion and God allows those devourers, those, those, those workers of iniquity to come in and take our life, to take our liberty, to take our joy away, friend, we are in for some very sad days and years. I am concerned tonight that America is headed for this type of destruction. I fear tonight we are so full of pride. We are so full of arrogance and trust in ourselves that we cannot even recognize when we've sinned against God or when we've been uh, 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 dishonest in the sight of God and before men. And I fear that our nation is in trouble I fear that judgment just like this could happen in the nation of America. I fear that we have so many terrorists within our land. I fear that we have so many nations that you would list as evil because they have no faith in God. They have no recognition of God. And they would love to destroy our land, some with nuclear missiles, some with physical attack, some from cutting off supplies or hurting our nation. I fear that God is going to take his hand of protection away from America. I'm going to tell you uh, six things that the children of Israel did that caused God to allow the Midianites to come in and to destroy uh, their land. First of all, I want to point out that for 40 years they had enjoyed the good blessings of God. Up to this point, for 40 years, they had enjoyed the blessings of God. It had been 40 years since an enemy had been strong enough to make any type of an attack to hurt the nation of Israel. Oh, but now God's hand of protection uh, has been moved and taken away and God is permitting the Midianites to come in and bring harm, to bring damage, judgment, and destruction to the place that it causes the people to cry out. Now, what were the six steps or behaviors that they did that brought about God allowing the Midianites to destroy uh, their land? First of all, there was a departure from obedience. There was a departure from obedience. God had given them responsibility. God had told them how to behave, how to treat one another. God had told them how he wanted them to behave toward him. But the Bible said they did evil in the sight of the Lord. Rather than being honest with their neighbors, they were dishonest and took advantage of one another. Rather than them being righteous in the sight of God, they did evil. They did that which was pleasing to the flesh rather than that which is pleasing to the Lord. Now we're living in that day of departure. The word of God has been kicked out of our school system. They are now teaching in many school systems across America that there is even more than two genders. Boys and girls are being confused as to which gender they are and how sad and how evil and how wicked this has become as this group of people prey on our children to pervert their minds and their bodies and cause them to commit evil against God. First of all, there was a departure from right. Second of all, there was a discipline. 
God brought sorrow as a result of their sin. I want to ask you a question. If all of these sinful behaviors are what God calls sin, if they were right, why is it that they cannot be satisfied or be happy with their living? Why is it that they're always working to change laws and to force people to accept their sinful and immoral behavior? Friend, God brought sorrow as a result of their sin. People do not burn down buildings because they're happy. People do not attack law enforcement because they're enjoying life. People do not tear down statues of heroes that America has appreciated through the years because they're enjoying life. They do those things because they are unhappy. They are like Cain who was filled with anger, who was wroth, and God said to him, Cain, why art thou wroth? He said, you're doing what you want to do. Why aren't you happy? I'll tell you why. Because nothing brings happiness and joy in the life of an individual outside of yielding to the will of God for their life. Sin does not bring happiness. Sin brings sorrow. So not only was there a departure from obedience, there was discipline for their sin, which was sorrow. Third of all, we find in verse number two that there was defeat. The Bible says in verse number two that Midian prevailed against Israel. There was one reason that Midian prevailed against Israel and only one reason. It wasn't because they had a superior army to Israel. It wasn't because they had superior intelligence uh, to Israel. It wasn't because they were a stronger and a mightier army than that of Israel. It was simply because Israel had sinned against God and God allowed the Midianites to defeat the army of Israel. Now we've been a mighty nation and oh how I love our military. I love those that serve our country. And if America suffers defeat, it will not be because of a lack of strength or power or ability or intelligence or training. It will be because we have sinned against God. And when we sin against God, God will allow our militaries to suffer defeat. I fear that tonight. All the things that they're forcing on our young men and our young ladies that are attempting to serve their country, uh, the critical race theory and the, and the, and the uh, teaching of multiple, uh, 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 multiple uh, behaviors that Bible calls sin and abomination that they say is good and right. You see, sin brings defeat. I'll give you the fourth thing. There was distress, verse number two. Uh, Mountain sunlight was exchanged for the shadow of the cave. When Israel came under the rule of Midian, they didn't live in the open and enjoy life. They went into the caves. They had to go into hiding. They lived in distress. Think about it. How are we living in America today? We're living in distress. We're living in fear. We're having to lock door after door. We're having to put up not only locked doors, but lights and security systems and alarm systems and hiring more security. Why? Because our nation is in distress. Why? Because we're not living right. We're not preaching and promoting righteousness. Even the church is trying to figure out how we can have a rock concert at church and call it church. Even the church is figure, trying to figure out how do we dress like the world? How do we dress our women like harlots and our uh, men behave like whoremongers and bring in the filthy music of the world? How can we do that and still uh, have church Friend, I want to tell you something. That old book right there tells us what's right. And if we don't get back to living in righteous living according to this book, we're going to face the same thing. This distress that's coming on our nation today, how sad it is. It's for one reason. We've turned our backs on God. Hey, we need to get this book back in our homes, back in our living rooms. And if we would get this book back in our living rooms, it wouldn't be long. It'd be back in our schools again. It would be. 
But it's not going to start in the school. It's going to start in the living room. It's going to start with us going to Sunday school and teaching and training our children to do what is right. I give you the fifth thing we find here in verses 3 through 6, total devastation. The food supply of his people had always been a matter of special concern to God. In the very place where God had promised them bread without scarceness, Israel was hungry. Was it because God didn't love them anymore? Absolutely not. God's heart was broken as a heart of a parent whose child is away from home and away from obedience, living in rebellion. There was total devastation. No wonder there's seven years of, dis, uh, of depression in this land. The Bible said they left no sustenance for Israel. They had nothing for themselves. They had nothing for God. They didn't even have, they weren't even able to care for their animals. The enemy had even destroyed that. How terrible. Where did it start? They departed from the word of the Lord. They departed from the word of God and they began to live evil lives. What was the sixth thing? In verse number six, we find the Bible says, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. They brought despair. I mean, despair says there's no hope. There's no help. And they began to cry. Folks, hear me well. Wouldn't it be a good thing if we started off with despair? Or we started off with humility? Wouldn't it be a good thing that we would decide, hey, there folks, Christians, they used to go to church on Wednesday night, still healthy, still able to go. They don't go because they don't want to go. They don't go to church on Sunday night, not because, not because they're not physically able to go. They just don't want to go. Other things are more important. And these people, folks, when they began to do evil in the sight of the Lord, everything, everything they had was wrecked and ruined. There was departure from the truth, which brought the discipline of God. Sorrow was in the land. That brought defeat. That brought distress. That brought devastation. And that brought despair. Now, the rest of the chapter is a great chapter. Gideon hears the cry and the call of God. And Gideon responds and he delivers the children of Israel from the hand of the Midianites. But there's seven years of depression. I want to say to you tonight, if you're right with God, stay right with God. If you're beginning to mess around with sin and you're beginning to do evil rather than righteousness, you better fall on your face tonight, dear friend. Oh, God wants to bless us. Let's live right. God wants to bless our lives. Let's let him do what he wants to do. Thanks for watching tonight. Here's a good song as we go off the air. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through his infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed. Redeemed. the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. I know I shall see in His beauty the King in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeemed, 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 redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever.